Good morning, everyone. This is Mike O'Malley here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 14th, 2020, recorded on 11.51 a.m. Eastern Time. Taking a look right now at Tropical Storm Sally, we're going to be focusing on this here for a little while. Sally has undergone some pretty drastic changes since we talked again last night, and again, we have more of this banding structure that's evident on the satellite that's banding uh, on the far eastern side. Now, this western side is still a little bit exposed, but what we have seen during the day today, and this was confirmed by reconnaissance aircraft, we've seen the old low-level center actually reform under this pocket of deeper convection out across here. And this means that not only is the track shifted a little bit further to the east, it is also getting a little bit more time over water as the storm is now going to slow down very significantly while it kind of just crawls towards the west-northwest here and makes landfall near the Mississippi-Alabama border now. So this no longer is significantly expected to impact portions of eastern Louisiana, but again, far eastern Louisiana from New Orleans, Baton Rouge, all the way kind of over to the uh, Florida Panhandle, could see impacts from the storm, certainly with very strong winds, and the storm certainly seems to be taking on more of that rapid intensification characteristic. We can see here from the Air Force Reconnaissance aircraft that they did find pressures here that were lower. Uh, you can see where the old center was, 998 millibars here. That was the old center. The new center reformed at 993, and we've started to see a more symmetric wind field. You can see on the first pass, there was not really a radius of maximum winds in through this general vicinity. Now we're starting to see the new center with pressures down to about 991 millibars, probably lower, and a, a tighter radius of maximum winds and a more symmetric wind field. The NOAA P-3 aircraft that just kind of went through found some very startling and unsettling numbers here. Uh, pressures were down to about 984 millibars with winds that were about 88 knots at the surface. And uh, that is rather concerning. That doesn't necessarily mean that those are getting fully transposed down to the surface. But Sally has likely now intensified into a hurricane and when kind of uh, accounting for the higher altitude that this plane is flying at, the pressures are somewhere probably within the high 980s, probably around 987 to 988 millibars with surface winds about 65 to 70 knots, putting it within the low-grade Category 1 uh, intensity. Now we can see what's happening here to the storm. This is the h wharf from the 6Z run uh, as of 1 o'clock this morning, you can see where our storm was positioned. It was under an upper-level anticyclone, and that has basically continued. And if we move the model forward here uh, to about 2 p.m. this afternoon, we can see the storm starting to deepen here, about 988 millibars. And we can see the reason why is because now we have a well-established outflow pool, basically, an upper-level anticyclone right over the storm, so there is no shear to really speak of across the storm environment. Now, earlier this morning, we had a um, basically this area of deep convection, but it really wasn't doing much. And you can kind of see how the storm has taken on a different characteristic since then. It has now started to rotate these hot towers inside the inner core structure. And we have started to see a better looking storm today consolidating and probably undergoing rapid intensification and will likely do so all the way up until the landfall point, which is expected now to be sometime by later tomorrow. The official National Hurricane Center forecast here brings this just east of the New Orleans Metroplex here by about 7 p.m. tomorrow. So the storm is now slowing down and kind of rounding this ridge, basically. Now, it is also entirely possible that the storm does move a little bit to the east of where this cone is currently forecast and maybe make a track here somewhere closer to the Alabama-Mississippi-Florida border. Uh, so hurricane warnings have been issued from all the way from just east of Baton Rouge and um, New Orleans all the way through Mobile Bay, basically, as the chance of a hurricane uh, coming through that region in the inner core is a lot better now because the storm is slowing down and it started to rapidly intensify and it does seem like this might get pulled a little bit further towards the north. So I wouldn't be surprised to see 
this track kind of be nudged slightly further to the east. And you also notice that the, these storm, you know, tracks in through here, these little individual plots, they're not spaced out. You don't have a depression here and the next marker here where that would be moving several hundred miles within a 24 hour period. These markers are all very uh, compact and very confined and that is going to drive up these rainfall totals. And that's one of the things that we're deeply concerned about is the threat for near 20 plus inches just to the uh, east of the landfall point, near and east of the landfall, landfall point with 15 to 20 inches of heavy rainfall. This is a very dangerous concern. And this won't be like a Harvey situation where this just sits there and sits there and stalls. But this is similar in some retrospects because this is going to dump a lot of heavy rainfall over a short amount of time here. We're talking only, you know, within a couple of days where we have 15 to 20 inches of heavy rain. And this is going to cause a very significant storm or a very significant flooding rain event along with the threat of storm surge. And again, our storm surge values right now. Uh, from about Lake Bourne all the way to near Ocean Springs is about five, uh, 7 to 11 feet with 5 to 8 feet of storm surge expected from near uh, Ocean Springs to near uh, the Mobile Bay region, which has 4 to 7 inches or 4 to 7 feet. And all the way even over to Cedar Key, you can see 1 to 3 feet of storm surge in this region and you're well removed from the center. So there's going to be impacts felt over a very large area, and that's certainly going to be one of the problems. So this is something to take very seriously, and this is going to be a very dangerous threat, likely to intensify all the way up until landfall with maybe some increase. You can see here on the h wharf, there is now going to be a shift of the wind out towards the west-southwest. This might increase wind shear late in the game, but this will likely be a strong hurricane moving into uh, the Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida border, and this is going to cause a pretty significant threat for a lot of people, especially with rainfall amounts here that could extend well into portions of Alabama of well over six inches of rainfall. So we could be talking about, uh, you know, rain measurements being measured in feet and not inches across portions of the southeast, and this is going to be a big concern over the next several days. As for Hurricane Paulette here, maximum sustained winds are nearing 100 miles per hour and a pressure down to about 970. Uh, the storm did pass over Bermuda uh, late last night and in through this morning and has now started to, or it did slow down and it's now beginning to take its northeast turn away from land here. There is still impacts being felt for Bermuda and conditions will only start to improve uh, really. Uh, after about 5 p.m. this evening as what we will be seeing is a storm now beginning to race off towards the north and east and the conditions will start to improve uh, as the day progresses for Bermuda. But right now you're still getting hit with heavy rain, flooding, obviously, you know, uh, kind of the whole nine yards there. You took a direct hit basically from the storm and uh, thankfully it wasn't a major hurricane, but this did pack you know, 90 to 100 mile per hour winds with obviously gusts higher to about, you know, 120. So this was a very dangerous storm. We can see here from the uh, recon plane that was in there earlier, hurricane force winds kind of encompassing Bermuda right now. So really conditions will start to improve again later today. The pressure holding steady at about 970 millibars. Again, the highest flight level winds here were on the northwest or the northeast side, basically and where we kind of usually expect them to be. And the storm has now started to kind of make that turn. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of recon uh, measurements, but that's because it's so far away from their base in Keesler. So they are certainly, you know, having to fly a long distance for this mission. But pressure is on the order of about 970 millibars. And this is also expected to become a major hurricane over the next couple of days. Continued intensification. Uh, through roughly about Tuesday, and then after Tuesday, uh, rapid weakening will start to kind of occur, and this will become a remnant circulation probably by Friday or early on the weekend, so that's something to kind of take note of. Now, one last stop here on Tropical Storm, um, or now Tropical Storm Teddy. Again, maximum sustained winds right now at about 40 miles per hour. We can see that today 
We have a better increase of showers and thunderstorms with a banding uh, structure here evident on the south and southeast side and also the southwest side. So we have banding here on about two quadrants. We now need to see banding occurring on the northwest and northeast quadrants and more of that southeast quadrant. So we still have really about two and a half quadrants to get this actually uh, wrapped up fully, but we are starting to see more banding that's occurring into our storm. It's an overall much healthier look today than it certainly has been. And the Hurricane Center does bring this major hurricane intensity uh, over the next few days, though this will probably not pose an immediate threat to land. And again, here on the GFS forecast, we can kind of see how the overall evolution of this is. Again, you've, you have your two hurricanes here on the model. This is actually Tropical Storm Vicky right here. That is moving off towards the northwest, no threat to land. That is weakening Tropical Depression or Ene. We can see here that on the GFS forecast, this continues to head towards the west-northwest. It is a little bit of a change, though, because we can see that the model is further to the southwest today, and it is moving almost due west-northwest. So we don't necessarily have that tug that's kind of bringing it in out like here. And we've seen an overall progression towards the west-southwest with these models. And uh, But one of the things that we are going to be watching is how strong that ridge is in the atmosphere. And we can kind of take a look at that here, that this very strong ridge uh, to the north of it, or way to the north of it here, that's the strongest part of the ridge there. But overall, it's a very weak setup down here, a very weak ridge setup. You have your up two upper level lows here and another trough here. This trough right here that's kind of digging in across the northeast and the Canadian Maritimes should begin to weaken down this ridge, and that should help to pull our storm to the north and really take it on out to sea. So we will be watching that because, again, just how quickly uh, this actually develops remains the biggest question. But right now, this seems that it will stay to uh, the north and east of the Lesser Antilles. And again, there is some model spread here. Again, the official forecast almost now to the uh, right of the uh, CMC, the GFS, and the HWARF models, but right near basically the multi-model consensus, which is what they follow heavily. So the multi-model consensus still remains to the east, uh, but some of the models, other models have shifted back towards the west today. But you can see this should remain no threat for the Lesser Antilles at all. Of course, we do have other tropical waves that are also coming off at this time. We, we do have a couple of other systems that kind of will be coming off. And uh, we can see that here that we have uh, this system right here with a 40% chance. This will be a low rider, a pretty low rider actually, coming off at a fairly low latitude. But once again, conditions are expected to become a little bit less favorable over this region. And then this threat over here really uh, only really has about a 10% chance. So not really... Um, expect it to really get going. All right. With well, that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon uh, or early afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again later this, this evening.